Good afternoon, YouTube. Today we're going to do an unboxing. This just arrived in the mail today. Actually, not the mail, but from FedEx. And I'm not going to give any hints about what this is. Other than the fact that you can guess that it has something to do with electronics radio, etc. <clears throat> see how it's packed uh, horribly. Packed pretty tightly. Not double boxed. I, you know, I've yet to receive a double box radio. <laughs> We always say that the boxes radio should be double boxed, but they never are. I have yet I have to say I've yet to receive one. Okay, as you can see from the back of this, it is a radio. It does have a copper chassis, copper plated probably. And it is black. Let's see what it is. I'd like to try to get it out of here on camera. If it's small enough, I think I can manage. Here we go. Move the box. Hmm, I noticed something already, which I'll tell you about in a minute. I'm going to have to... Oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> Sorry about my camera being off. Here we go. Let's put it this way. Looks a little rough, because it is. But I got a good price on it. Guess what I bought this for on eBay? $9.99 plus shipping. I've seen them in good shape go for considerably more. This is a Howard 430. Uh, it's been repainted, so I don't have the classic Howard labels, which I'll show you in a minute. And I knew that when I bought it. And I wanted to look at this paint. It does look like it has been repainted. This. I wonder if it was the silver chassis. There's there's two versions of this radio I've seen online. One was, uh, well, the most classic one is the black one with the labels. And then there's another one I found that was silver, totally silver, but they said it was an original silver, but they called it a Series 2. And I didn't know there were two series on these. It says Howard Model 430, Chicago, Illinois. And you can't read it, but it does say Series 2 uh, underneath it here. Um, series 1, Series 2. Here we go. These look like this. And you can see the classic Art Deco Howard logo. And the bands across the top here. And then the band across the front were silver. Uh, let's see. Another view. Another view. Here we go. You can see the silver bands. Now this is interesting. This is a, rate, a stock photo from an advertisement. There's no label. Does not say Howard Radio on it. I think this is a different series maybe. But it does have the silver bands and this one it's completely black. It does not have the silver bands. However, it's chipped and it's silver underneath so I don't know but in between it's silver too. So is that bare metal? Is it paint? I don't know. It's rusty. It needs to be refinished. Either way it's going to be repainted. I personally like the black with the silver lines. It looks more Art Deco. And the other cool thing is I knew it was missing the labels, but they are available. Fortunately. And I wanted to wait till I got this before I ordered them. But Radio Days, and I have the website up somewhere. Oh, this is a Howard website, which I thought was really cool. There is the Art Deco label. Classic 1930s Art Deco label, which would have gone right here at the top. And then it says uh, Communications Radio underneath it or something like that. The actual model here is right there. And it says uh, communications receiver model 430 underneath the Howard. And if we go to Radio Days, 
they sell it. And it has the Howard label and it has all your other labels for the knobs and buttons. The only thing this does not have, it does not have the words communications receiver model 430 underneath unfortunately I don't know why they didn't make it with that probably because it's more generic and all their radios use similar labels and different models that they made and probably they made it available so people could uh, use those stickers on decals on different models this is the this model though right here also, I'm obviously missing the knobs. Fortunately, these are generic knobs. They're they're uh, they're not hard to find. I've seen them on eBay. I'm not worried about locating them. The one thing about the two things about this radio. One, everybody claims this is a bad. Well, I don't shouldn't say everyone. A couple websites say it's a poor performer. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. It's not restored yet. The other thing is this dial place plate, which is a beautiful brass always rusts and it's rusty on the listing for this radio I'm gonna grab this it showed a dial plate cover and I've never seen one with a cover most uh, things I've read online said it didn't come with a cover but I just noticed there is an envelope in here with the radio and I'm hoping they took the cover out and put it in here there was a plastic cover in here that had fallen down uh, on the eBay listings and I think it might be in here I hope it's in here if it is I believe it's rare I have nowhere to put this camera let's see I'm gonna have to pause okay it was the cover and it is cracked it has uh, tape holding it cracked together and this has some kind of glue on the edges, but it feels like, I almost said it feels like glass, but it's got to be some kind of plastic. I don't know when they what kind of clear plastic they would have in 1936, which is when these radios were made, which is kind of interesting. It might, maybe it's not original, because uh, everything I've read is these don't, didn't have dial covers but that sure looks like it fits and it was inside there and fallen down on the eBay listing you couldn't see the whole thing it was falling down couldn't see that it was cracked either because it was like crooked it was like that in the eBay listing you could see but inside this person I mean, I'm glad they pulled it out and put it in the bag so to prevent further damage uh, I bet I could glue that though won't be able to do anything about the crack it'll be visible but um, if this is original that's cool to have unfortunately what I, they people they say I always wonder who is they I hate when people say that they say who is they different websites I've read online say that the reason this face rusts is because there's no cover well this one had a cover but it's still rusty. Obviously, if this thing's sh outside stored in a shed or something, moisture is going to get inside the cabinet just from condensation and uh, rust it. In fact, having a cover over it might cause more condensation to build up underneath it and rust this. You know, it wouldn't stay dry. Uh, I don't know. Anyhow, I uh, will make another video. Actually, I'll probably make another video once I pull it and splice them together into one longer video to show the inside of this thing. Uh, there were no pictures of the inside of this online. It was bought from an eBay uh, consignment shop so they had no knowledge of radios. They had just listed this thing. And uh, it kind of flew under the radar at $10 I think because it looks so rough. But you know what? With a paint job, knobs which can be had fairly easily, and the decals from radio days, I, the outside of this will clean up very easily. As you can see, I got it out. It was a challenge. It wasn't that bad, actually. <clears throat> but it's definitely farm fresh, as they like to say on American Pickers. It was in a f store somewhere for a long time, which is a good thing because it's probably untouched electrically, at least I hope so. Going to take a quick look inside. Let me turn my lights up. This is just how I found it.
the speaker was disconnected and coiled, the speaker cable that is right here, was just like that when I pulled it out. It was not connected. Somebody had disconnected it and slid the thing back in the chassis, screwed it in, and packed it away just like that. So I'm going to guess at the time it wasn't working, they packed it away and uh, forgot about it. The speaker, I'm just, you know, just noticing it. It's got a couple little holes in it. Those can be patched easily enough. It's a Jensen speaker. I don't know if that's original to this radio. No idea what was in these. There's only two screws in it, so uh, there's some missing. So it's been out and put back in. There is enough material there. I might be able to get some clean material on the holes. While I got this here, I was looking at the, you know, I was trying to determine if I can tell if there was ever the label here that said Howard with, you know, communications receiver 430. And, you know, you'd think you'd see a little raised area from it or something. And there just isn't anything there. now. Okay, let's look at the chassis. It's, it's farm fresh. We have a little uh, sunflower seed stuck there on the top. Uh, quite a bit of corrosion on our chassis and the steel band turns okay but yeah it's pretty beat as you can see that's the first time I'm really looking at it myself I, I just pulled it out uh, a few minutes ago. Quite rusty. Yeah, we're going to strip this down. I, I want to really do a full restoration on this radio and make it look as good as it can. It good, as good as it can. I'm no expert at this, but I'll do the best I can. Uh, okay, on the back here it says uh, serial number 4 82923 Chicago model 430-2 which means it is the second revision of this. There's a version 1 and a version 2 and as I said on the bottom it also says version 2. Uh, if I can find any more history on this radio I hope so. Oh look at that. It's got an original Howard labeled tube. How cool is that? Who would have... I, had, would have had no clue that they made tubes. They probably actually had them made for them by Sylvania or one of the big makers. And, uh, well, it's kind of tight. And relabeled, but who knows? Howard, made in the USA. That is awesome. I've never seen one. It's a 41 tube. Hmm. We'll see how that tests later. RCA on that one. Uh, let's see. This is an interesting tube sitting on a transformer. Oh, it's Howard. Excellent. That's a Howard metal tube. So we have a Howard metal tube and a Howard glass tube. Very cool. Howard made in USA. That in and of itself to me is collectible. That's cool. Let's see what else. Fortunately, <laughs> even though there's a seed in there, I'll get something to pick that out of there. Use my hemostats. Yeah, that's a seed, all right. Wedged in there by that cap. Okay, but I don't see any evidence. There's quite a few coils here. They don't look chewed <laughs> by anything. Whatever was nesting in here, fortunately, wasn't snacking on the uh, wires, at least on top. You haven't looked underneath yet. That might be uh, something altogether different down there. Okay, I'm going to stop the camera a minute because uh, there is a bottom plate on this. I'm going to have to unscrew that and then I'll come right back. Okay, I'm taking the last screw off on camera. I want to open this up on camera.
first time I'm looking at it. Oh yeah, there was something living in here. That's why there was a seed on top. <laughs> There's a lot of seeds underneath. Probably in a barn or something. Lovely. Well, it looks quite old at least. I don't think there's anything alive in there. I just hope they hasn't chewed up any wires, whatever was in there. Now this has a um, bias cell in here, which I knew about. It looks a little cooked. I, uh, from what I understand, I've never dealt with them before, but they can be replaced by a small voltage battery. It looks almost melted or something. I don't know how focused that is, but the end is like curled up and melted looking. Well, I'm happy to report I'm looking at all original paper caps. I don't think this has ever been touched. Old resistors, carbon comps. Happily it looks original and happily the bottom transformer wires do not look chewed up <laughs> by whatever was living inside this. Probably a mouse. I don't think anything much bigger could fit in here. It's not that big of a radio. Quite old seeds, so yeah, nothing alive in there now. And I'm not going to clean this out right here. I'm going to take it outside and blow all this garbage out of here and then uh, we'll take a closer look let me get all that junk out I'll be back okay quick return it's cleaned out I was looking at let me get this over at the cabinet there's overspray in here so I don't know how well you can see it on the camera it was repainted more than likely I mean obviously overspray can be from the factory too but looks a little messy you can see it right along there right where it would typically be if somebody spray painted this thing it had to have been done a long time ago I mean nothing electrical that was done to this radio I don't think if they did anything to this radio all they did was repaint the cabinet straight black maybe because of rust I don't know I've been working on trying to get the speaker out because uh, I wanted to check on that as far as the spray and evidence of repainting and uh, <laughs> the studs are spinning the nuts are loose and the studs are spinning but the studs don't go anywhere they don't go through the top so they must be uh, I don't know riveted in or something underneath I don't know Anyway, either way, it's going to get repainted eventually. <clears throat> Let's look at the chassis. Oh, I took it out, dusted it out, and then took a vacuum to it. Got all the junk out. I did find a couple uh, chewed wires, nothing major. I found one right down there. Right there. And because there's a fair number of cloth wires running in and around here, this is all the coils. Uh, I'm going to say that this whole unit here, which it does look like a separate unit, will eventually have to come out and be inspected for uh, breaks in the coils and check continuity of all the coils and make sure the wiring is correct on them. Okay, let's look down here. So, as I was saying, oh, there's my other chewed wires. <laughs> Two chewed wires, one there, one there. I don't see anything or obviously replaced. There's dog bone resistors, there's paper capacitors, there's a can electrolytic, which is probably original. Electrolytic. Yeah. 
that's what I was hoping for. It's in kind of rough shape, but it's all original. So the wiring is intact. Uh, nobody's mucked around in there, hopefully. Take a quick look at the front now that the, the chassis is pulled. And as I said, uh, kind of what happened on all of these radios, uh, they rusted. The copper, the brass coating, uh, I don't know, it's obviously a steel plate that has brass coating on it. It's too bad they didn't make that solid brass. It's not that thick either. That's fairly thick. I don't know how the heck they would have coated that, but obviously if there's rust, it's steel underneath. Unfortunately, uh, there's no good way to clean that <laughs> and make it look any better and without ruining the ink, I don't think. That's probably just going to have to be lived with. But the rest of it looks good. This will be a fun project. It's going to be a complete takedown. I'm not going to pull everything out of the cabinet, absolutely everything, but darn near it. Uh, we'll see as I get into it. I don't know what it's going to require, but it should be fun. Okay. This is Tom.